So I'm now just killing time again, but I'm hoping Sophie's going to be back. Um, thank you all for coming um, to our second volunteer event at Progress House. Uh, we're really delighted to have you all along uh, here with us today. She just left the room after coming back in. But I'm Hannah. For those who haven't met me, my name's Hannah and I am the fundraising lead for, the, for Cumbria and the west of our region. So we cover 8,000 square miles as a charity and we've just recently handed on the Isle of Man, which I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more about in a bit. Um, and then just joining us, Q Sophie, who is our North East fundraising lead. Uh, is anybody in the room here from a different department? Does anyone work not for fundraising or volunteer not for fundraising? Any ground crew or anything like that? HR. Hello. HR is there. Mika, <laughs> the <laughs> at the volunteer event, do you remember that? <laughs> um, hello. <laughs> so um, everybody apart from yourself is here as um, ground crew or friends of ground crew in terms of fundraising. Yeah. Fantastic. So, um, yeah, a bit of a welcome for me and Sophie. We can't do, and our teams can't do, what we do without you guys. And, um, you know, the last 18 months that me and Sophie have been yeah. uh, sort of leading this fundraising side has been crazy. And it's partially down to you guys and all the suggestions you come forward with and all the things you get involved with. And it really does mean the world to she means crazy in the best kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. It really does mean the world to the charity that we all love. Um, so, yeah, really great to be here. I, I sound like I'm repeating myself, but it's just so wonderful to see everyone in person um, after a um, crazy few years. And it's nice to see, obviously, we all know Team West is best, <laughs> but it is nice to see... Uh, our East partners as well. So um, I don't think it would be a volunteer celebration event without talking about people who can't be with us today. So in the last year since we all gathered, we have lost two of our very dear volunteers, Gillian and Bruce. Um, they wouldn't want us to be sad about that. So can we have a massive round of applause? For them? <laughs> I know certainly. Um, those that worked with Bruce in particular will never forget that gentleman because he was definitely one of a kind and Gillian and the work she did with the farming community in Cumbria is massive for us and she's opened up many doors and we will raise millions of pounds because of these people so really really good. So we just wanted to talk to you about who is the team who do you guys speak to from head office so it's not Crime Watch. It's not Britain's Most Wanted. I promise, okay? Um, so this is the team that you guys will communicate with. So on this side here, we have got the North East fundraising team. Amanda, Sophie, Ben, Giles, Ellie, Victoria, Cheryl and Emily. So they are, Cheryl and Emily are our new um, fundraising assistant so they will do be doing a lot of like the monthly tin administration and um, the, when you're signed on to pledges going forward they'll be communicating that to you guys they also put all of the data onto volunteer roll so they're really really crucial parts <coughs> Cheryl's here at the back hello <laughs> um, and how long have you been with us now six weeks six weeks <laughs> so She's officially the new girl. We've got wet sponges outside later on. So we're all just going to see if she, you know, initiation starts now. No <laughs> um, also, in the last 12 months, huge changes in terms of um, our structure. We no longer have a separate marketing department to fundraising. We are as one as income and engagement. Um, and Ashley, who is this very smiley face here, is leading that. So... Um, we've been as one for about five months now, so it's yeah. really early days. Uh, huge savings for the charity in doing it that way. And that has allowed us to really expand what we're doing, certainly with our major donors and corporate with the addition of Giles. And Tasha, who is our Cumbria uh, fundraising specialist. Uh, we've got Mika and Matt and myself. Um, so that is our fundraising team. So do the fundraisers want to give us a wave for those who have not met us? The police are coming soon, okay? They've got your picture. <laughs> um, other exciting things 
that have happened this year is our training company have moved in house. We'll hopefully be able to have a little nosy of the training company in a bit when we have a tour. Um, and Phil has come on board. This is Phil. He's definitely on the wanted list. There. <laughs> <laughs> that is smile. a welcome mugshot. <laughs> um, and he has massively transformed what we do. So for those who aren't aware, we no longer put bags through doors. One, it's bad for the planet. Two, it's very labour intensive. And three, we don't want our bags to end up in landfill if they've not been had cloves in. So it's just a really positive way forward. We're doing solely what we call ad hoc collections. So people can go on our website and pick a slot. They can call us and pick a slot. Um, and essentially we are covering. And online now. High tech. <laughs> Whoever oh, thought the oh, training company was high I tech. <laughs> um, so yeah, massive. We're hoping that the the money that the training company raises. So for those that don't know, we're talking about bags of clothes and the clothing collections. We're hoping that the money that they raise will be more than ever because of the way that they've allowed themselves to streamline by moving on site and really reducing those costs. Uh, we've got David, our CEO. Um, it was his son's 21st yesterday. I told him he was welcome to come in drunk, but he refused. Uh, very politely sends his apologies. And um, for those who've met David know he comes to a lot of fundraising events and he's really hands-on. So I'm sure if you haven't met him at some point over the summer, you'll bump into him making cups of tea at bike night or helping set up gazebos. So uh, we have got Chris here, who is our finance manager. Um, he's the guy that makes um, payments happen, so anyone who claims um, volunteer expenses or anyone who needs like a stall paid for or anything like that, Chris and his team. We've got Jan with us today at the back who works on Chris's team, um, but I think it's important that you know it's not just us loud people that <laughs> make us all be able to do what we do, um, uh, which brings us on to HR. They're in the naughty corner here. We've got Andy, Kirsten and Sheridan. Andy and Kirsten are here. Um, and they, so they, you meet them on induction. Kirsten's done a marvellous sterling job uh, in recent months of getting everybody inducted, your uniform, your lanyards. Um, she does all of that amazing stuff. And I say amazing because it's the most boring stuff in the world to me, but... Hats off to you, Kirsten, because you made it happen for our team, so thank you so much. Uh, we've got Jules, this shiny little ray, she's all on her own there. She is our facilities manager, so for anyone who does um, ground maintenance, volunteering, or if you were hiring out the room and things like that, Jules oversees all that. And then we've got Tracy and Tom, who make up our events team, so Tom is here. Hello. Mm -hmm. um, so they do things like the annual ball, the golf days, the Great North Run, the big sort of headline events that we put on throughout the year. So that is, um, hopefully, most people have spoke to one of these people at some point and hopefully that puts some mugshots to names. because you're our favourite, Ellie. So, uh, Ellie is in the room here. She is um, our social media magician. Um, so all of the content that you see, the stories, the engagement, things like that, Ellie oversees all that. So anyone who takes pictures and sends them in and they end up on our story, Ellie will have done that. And I'm sure um, if we get a chance later on, we'll you know, come and speak to Ellie and she'll tell you the best sort of what works well for us and that type of thing. And then Araminta, who is um, a marvel at, she's one of our journalists, essentially. She gets our word, the word spread um, in the local and national press. And she also makes amazing videos, of which I've shamelessly stolen one. And we're gonna have a little watch. i 
another 21 years of volunteering and um, those that volunteer now and those that have, you know, even just given 10 minutes of their time to this charity over those years have absolutely been pivotal to saving lives. Um, another person who's been pivotal to saving lives, is that even a word, pivotal? Andy Mawson. And he's going to come and give you a quick update and he's just snuck in the back of the room. That was timed to perfection. <laughs> Sorry, Abdi, no pressure. Hello. That's all right. This is the easiest way of doing <laughs> things, right? Pressure. I mean, anywhere. You've got no microphone, you're just projecting. Right. So wherever you like. Thank you. <laughs> right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry, I, I can't be here for the kind of the whole day. I remember to be my niece's birthday. Uh, so I'll be blowing balloons up all morning to make her a little bit more. Um, but it's a, like an absolute, complete honour and privilege to see you all here, like our volunteers and members of staff that have giving up all our time on a Sunday to come down and celebrate what you all achieved. Uh, because we're kind of, and I don't know what you said, so I might repeat some of it, uh, but this is a room of lifesavers. Um, and the crew are very visible. The, air, the cars are marked up, that's our brand, the helicopter flying and landing in communities and everything, you know, but the heroes are in this room, like, as the video said, um, and it means the world to us, like, the fact that you give your time up, but what you achieve is amazing as well. Um, and it's hard just to keep sort of coming back to the fact that you are all lifesavers because you enable our mission. We're saving lives every single day of the week and these are lives that will be lost. Um, our medical director, Chris, did a piece of work and he looked at every single trauma patient in the north of England from 2010. And he did this himself, you know. Um, and what it's shown us is that because in trauma there's so many variables, it's really hard for us to prove what we do works. We know it does because we follow the outcomes on a case-by-case -case basis. But actually proving it scientifically is a, is a really huge piece of work, but, but we've done it as a service. And we're one of the first services in the world to do it. And one of the, one of the statistics that it's come out with is what's called a number needed to treat. So when they do research on the drugs and medicines, medicines have a a number called the number needed to treat. And aspirin, for example, which is the drug that you give everyone that has a heart attack, aspirin has a number needed to treat of 42. So that means that you have to give it 42 times to find, to find one benefit, and actually aspirin's really effective. When we looked at our trauma patients, the most critically injured patients were the ones that even the trauma system didn't expect to survive. Our number needed to treat was eight. So it's four times more effective than aspirin in people who the system expects to die. So I can tell you now, even you know, not even just from an emotion, from a feeling, I can tell you scientifically that you're all lifesavers, um, every single one of you. Uh, and what you do for the service is amazing. You're all ambassadors, and I hope that you feel that you're part of this, this bigger thing that keeps all these families together. And, we get a chance to meet the patients when they come back, and it's humbling and emotional, um, as is speaking to you all today. So I just, from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of everyone in Green today, and all of the ops team, and all of the patients that you've saved, right, thank you. Please stay with us and follow our journey and be part of it in the future. Thank you. What are the plans for what's going on? Well, um, well, I'm kind of excited really because in a few years we're going to make some advancements in, in the way that we deliver anaesthetics, for example. So at the minute, one of the key features of our service is the ability to, to basically put someone in a medical coma. And it's not without risk, so it's, it's, it's part of the, the care that we do that has to be very, 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 very safe. Obviously, we know when you go into an elective operation in hospital, there's a huge team around you, loads of surgeons, loads of uh, anaesthetists. In the pre-hospital environment, it might be three o'clock in the morning in a ditch with two of us. It's a very uncontrolled environment. <coughs> the drugs that we give, we give through um, what's called boluses, so we give them lumps of drug in a syringe. What we're about to start doing is we're about to start using syringe drivers, so that means instead of patients having a, a sort of, uh, what would you sort of call it, like, I guess irregular drug doses, they're actually going to have a really stable, really safe anaesthetic. Not to say it wasn't before, but we're getting, you know, constantly evolving, so that's one thing. 
Another thing we're going to be able to do is measure blood pressure through, through an artery. So at the minute we use non-invasive blood pressure monitoring where we put the cuff around somebody's arm and in flight uh, and something in the back of an ambulance it can be slightly inaccurate. It's not, it's not massively critical because like when we're transfusing blood we transfuse it to certain pulse points. So if for example someone's got penetrating trauma to their torso we don't want to over transfuse them. So we work to a carotid pulse. It sounds a bit arbitrary, a little bit sort of agricultural, um, but it works. But once we can now put these catheters into arteries, we'll actually get a beat by beat measure of what that, exactly what that kind of blood pressure is. So that'll be able to help us target blood volume even better. Um, within the last 18 months, we've built and expanded the system to be able to move patients between hospitals. So our service in Cumbria, Cumbria is a really challenging geography because the road network is, is really poor, but operating aircraft at night is quite restricted because of the high ground, because of the mountains and the weather in Cumbria. So instead of trying to find out ways that, to fly people out of Cumbria at night, we're actually going to do it by road. And that means basically once a patient's in hospital for an extended period of time, they get all sorts done to them. We can't downgrade that care. We'll have to carry on that kind of hospital almost intensive care level of care between Cumbria and Newcastle and we've done 10 of those transfers now which are again like hugely high impact so we're, we've got these amazing figures and we've got these amazing statistics but we're not kind of resting on our laurels either. Um, by the end of this year we're going to be 24-7 across both sites all being well and that's a huge achievement as well because in Cumbria there aren't any major trauma centres and so we have a very, well, a much easier pool of doctors to draw from in the northeast because I guess high performing doctors want to work at these big centres, they want to work at the RBI and James Cook and they the forefront of medicine. Cumbria actually struggles to recruit um, and we're actually, we actually play a part in attracting really, really capable doctors into Cumbria as well. So to go 24 7 in Cumbria has been a work of like, four or five years, really. Um, and that's, again, everyone in the room because we'll have to be able to fund that as well. So, you know, this time next year at this event, we'll be 24-7 at both sites. We're saving lives on the Isle of Man as well, just like Cumbria, they're a really vulnerable community with a very, well, a, a relatively slow fixed wing response at the minute. We're now getting to those patients like pre hospital and getting them over to the mainland. Um, and, we're involved in a national trial now with the whole blood. So when you donate a unit of blood in the UK currently, it all gets split apart into its component bits because it's more useful. Whole blood itself isn't available yet in the UK. And so ourselves and lots of other air ambulances are now trialling using whole blood instead of different bags of components. So we have to prove that's safe, but what it'll allow us is to keep more blood for longer. It's all about the logistics of it really, because the blood chain in the network is incredibly complicated and it, it takes a huge amount of work. So if we can get like four or five bags of cold blood at the start of a shift, um, well, we're going to be in a much better position, but we've just got to prove it safe. I kind of know it is, it's the same stuff. Um, but you know, science and medicine has got to be really robust. So that's most of what we're doing, I think. Um, Does anyone have any questions for Andy? <coughs> He's not going to stay all day, so um, if you've got questions, ask them now. What we may do is break for lunch now, and if, if nobody wants to ask the room the question, you're more than welcome to come have a chat, and then we can catch up later on. Does that sound good? No, to answer any questions if there's any, uh, any at the minute. No burning Everyone's, everyone's ready for lunch, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, well, let's do that then. Let's head for lunch, and then... Um, we can utilise your time whilst you're here, so that's okay. Uh, I know Lisa's not staying all afternoon either, so um, everyone goes to say hello to Lisa. She does lots of work here at head office, and she's looking at me awkwardly. But if you're leaving us early, then you're not going to get you in our pictures, Lisa. So we need to make sure that that is um, the case. So, yeah, let's... Um, lunch is outside. Stuff has just gone to go sort that out. We're hoping that the on-duty crew are also going to come out for lunch. Um, and, yeah... Thank you, and uh, it's great to all be together, isn't it? So it is.
giggle around, as I say, it was really nice to see Andy, albeit a fleeting visit, and we've had Nigel and Ali, our on duty pilot and doctor. I think, I don't know if they is. Nigel still nice. Oh, it's right there. Hello, Nigel. Nice. Nice. Yeah. An audit. Well, if you need any help, Nige, there's lots of hands. I'm going to do some work now. But we'll see them. We'll see them when we go outside for our group photo. Ali said to let him know. Yeah. Nigel, you're in this as well. If it's not all eaten before we leave, you know. You go. Okay, so um, tomorrow at Genos, it's quite a big day for us. Um, over recent years, obviously, David, our CEO, has come in and completely transformed the way we do things. And I think that can't be spoken more, which is um, by numbers. It's something that I really um, resonate with. So we know pre-David, it used to cost us £5,000 a mission. Now it's just over £4,000. So I think that's testament into doing more with the resource that we've got and making sure the right people are doing the right roles so we can make sure that every penny we're raising is going on that front line and helping more people. So off the back of that, we've done a complete overhaul of our uh, mission and values. Um, this is something that is being um, revealed to the um, HQ staff tomorrow. So uh, it's a complete new thing for everyone. And Andy, who is our um, HR connoisseur, is going to come and talk us through those. No pressure, Andy. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to just keep... Uh, well, I, I, can I, 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 can I have to give Mr Mawson a bit of grief, because he got the pre-food and I get the post-food chat. Um, but first, can I thank you all, because we wouldn't be where we are without all your efforts. Uh, you make a huge difference to what we can achieve. Um, so thank you for giving up your Sunday when the sun's shining. We really appreciate that. Uh, as Hannah was saying, and if you've been watching the, the video earlier, Genus was 21 on, fr on Friday. Uh, just a few years younger than me. <laughs> no, almost. Same age as me. <laughs> yeah. uh, when GNAS was set up 21 years ago, we, it drew up its own mission statement, its own uh, value statement, and that document has just been accumulating dust for virtually 20 years. So that's why we've probably spent the best part of six months looking at what our mission should be, and what our values should be. And our mission is fairly similar to what it was before. Uh, it's probably got a less focus on the um, medical side of things because we wanted to emphasize the charity a little bit more in, in what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, what the next slide I'm gonna show you is the result of probably six months worth of discussion within the charity. Um, we spent an awful lot of time looking at what we wanted to do uh, and I think the values that we come up with, which we're going to be launching with the staff tomorrow, pretty much reflect what most of our staff <coughs> are doing at the moment. Uh, so they reflect what we do, but I think they're, they're also very, very aspirational. <coughs> Um, I, I think in all of them, we've got areas that we think we can do more on. Um, so, do you want to put the, the next one up? Uh, we basically came up with three, well, we actually came up with four key areas that we're committed, and that's very much to our mission that we are the, the local air ambulance service, we save lives, we keep families together. That is the driver. And I, I think if you asked all our staff, we're proud as punch with that. And that's coming out in, in the committed uh, um, statement. There's still things we think we can do more on the commitment side, but <coughs> that's the first one. The second one is caring. Um, everybody that works in the charity cares about patients. 
Um, from a charity perspective, we care about our volunteers. Uh, it's really, really important that we do that. And again, there are lots and lots of things on the caring aspect that we think we can do better or uh, more effectively. Uh, we want to look after the mindfulness of the staff and things like that. So there's going to be lots and lots of initiatives coming out of, of that. The last one is we're courageous. Um, that covers lots and lots of um, areas. But I think the key area for me is, uh, is that we push our boundaries. We do things differently. I mean, we, you saw in the video about using the jetpack and things. That's the sort of charity that we are. But we want everybody, uh, be it staff, be it volunteers, to push that boundary a little bit further. Is there something you can do? Is there something that you can do that you've not done before? That's what we want to do. And that's what we want to support <coughs> our staff in achieving. Okay? Now, if I show you the next slide, that's very, very work. Does the picture's going there? Yeah. You'll, you'll see this upstairs when you go for your walk. None of the staff have seen it yet. It's going to be launched tomorrow. But the three C's, as we say, are all pulled together under the one team aspect. Um, now that covers many facets. Uh, if you go out into the helicopter, we've got a pilot, Nigel, we've got a paramedic, uh, who's a paramedic? And so Holly. Holly's a paramedic. Uh, okay. We've got the doctor, um, Dan. Dan? Okay. I'm not paying attention today. So even, even when the helicopter goes out, there's three specialist people that are pulling together as one team. Within the charity, we have all various departments. We've got HR department, we've got fundraising, IT, finance. They all need to pull together. And I think that's some of the things we'll be working on in the charity about how we do that. We've got uh, the fundraising group that are now here. Uh, sorry, the, uh, clothing and recycling group here now. All of those need to be pulled in together to uh, work in the same direction. Now we're going to be revisiting our recruitment process, our induction process, our training for staff and volunteers to incorporate this new, uh, new <coughs> values that we'll be working on. Um, and Part of the launch tomorrow that Sophie and a couple of other people here are going to be launching is just to launch those, set the scene, and there's going to be quite a lot of activity relating to all of these things over the coming months. So hopefully when you come back next year we'll be able to update you on what we've achieved, how we've <coughs> moved things forward. Uh, but we can't do that without your help, so thanks again for your time. And I think certainly um, for myself and Sophie, just to echo that you guys as volunteers are certainly committed and we know that you both care for this cause and care for each other and I, anyone that I've worked with, we all know we're courageous. We walk into these fundraising events and different things and don't know who's going to approach us. It might be there's things going on in our own lives and we, we come and we put a smile on our face and we are one team saving lives. So I think this is a really great thing and we're really proud to be able to tell you guys ahead of everyone else. So, um, yeah. This is our lunch slide. Did everybody keep Sophie away from the cheese? Because I heard she was choking on something in the hallway. Uh, it was some fruit. Stay away from the fruit. <laughs> but the 32 blocks of cheese that were blocking up to get to the fruit was <laughs> what about, yeah? Wow. So I did ask everybody to send me your highlights. Um, there wasn't a massive amount of responses. But if anyone in the room has a highlight of what they've been doing over the last year, we would love to hear those in a little moment. If you want to have a think about it. But I have shared a few with you all. Um, so, the highlight from Jill was seeing her helicopters out in the community. So for those that don't know, we've got four wooden helicopters around Cumbria and they were painted by Jill who is 
one of our volunteers and an ex-patient and also um, a local artist in Keswick and they are out spreading the word to tourists who come and visit our um, that side of our region. I think she, you can all agree she's done a sterling job with those. The hands on the top helicopter, uh, the, the hands of the paramedic, the doctors, the patients, I think if we talk about our three C's, Jill already had that covered with her <laughs> incredible artwork. She was ahead of the times. <laughs> <laughs> and then the bottom aircraft, which I believe is at Coniston, um, has different hamlets within Cumbria, um, sort of, so you've got the Moot Hall in Keswick on the front and you've got different mountains and things all over it, so uh, really out, you know, out the box, it's not something that we've done before, um, it's something that we would like to do more of, um, and they will all still be remaining throughout <coughs> the summer and then we're hoping to do a bit of an auction at the end of the summer to um, put them some new homes. So thank you to Jill. Uh, the second um, has come from Janet, who is in the room, not to embarrass her, because um, Lisa's already told me off for embarrassing her, and she's already given me a death stare again. Uh, so Janet, um, uh, we, we know Janet through the work we've been doing with Max out in the Lake District, and she's come on board um, to do amazing things in the Durham area, and her highlights were um, you know, being part of the £180,000 reveal for that specific fund, uh, fundraiser and his community um, and you can see there's obviously shots um, from the different activity that we've been doing as a team um, so really great highlight there from Janet. Um, Peter, his highlight here was helping me on the stall at Appleby for the first time so I was looking for some pictures of the stall at Appleby but I decided what we would do is show you a very typical scene at Appleby um, in, uh, agricultural show because we didn't want to, um, you know, rub it in that Sophie hasn't won a giant bronze horse for any of her stalls, you know. <laughs> so we thought a cute picture of the sheep enjoying the show would be just as, as effective. Um, and we're looking forward to being back there in the summer and hopefully Peter will come along and help <coughs> us. So, fantastic work. And we've got um, um, a highlight from Pam. So her inspiration to become a GNAS volunteer after she helped out at a fundraising event at Crossfield Farm and it made, she made it a New Year's resolution to, to register. Oh, hello, sorry, <laughs> hiding, hiding in the corner. Um, we, we'll drag anyone in and welcome Pam. Um, good to have you along with us and it's certainly a really good New Year's resolution to have. I'm sure we all set resolutions and say we're going to do more of this and to actually action them is really, um, you know, wonderful news for the charity. So, um, the blurriest <laughs> picture that was, so I had to put it on paint and rotate it round. I mean, I'm a technical whiz now. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Are you going to be joining the right memory? Absolutely. I'm showing the picture as well. I can guess. They're doing another event uh, on the 1st of July. Yeah, oh, are they? Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. Are you going to help help them? Yes. Not really. <laughs> so if anybody uh, wants to put their wellies on and help out across the field farm, Pam's your lady to speak to about that. Yes, there is a tractor. Pam, and then um, Sheila, unfortunately, can't be with us today, but she did send a few. At the first, she we did a sort of mini version of today with people who hadn't seen the aircraft yet, and we had... Um, half a dozen volunteers at Langwathby and two of the crew members showed them all the kits and really went into detail as to what they carry on the aircraft and the car. She described that as truly awesome, which if we're going out volunteering and things are truly awesome, I'd say that's a good day. And the second um, was a bit different. She was at a bucket collection in Penrith in December and she was chatting to someone and it turns out that she went to the same school with them 60 years previously. And I didn't even know Sheila was, I thought she was about 45, so this was, you know, <laughs> news to me. Um, and he got a, a, a rollicking from Sheila's father one day for pinching apples from their, or <coughs> from their orchard. So um, a brief but lovely walk down memory lane that only happened because she was on GNAS duty. So lovely, uh, you know, I think the surprise and delight that comes along when we're out in those communities is... Um, marvellous. 
Does anybody else have a highlight of the year? Anyone done anything that's maybe the three C's have come into play? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. There's a new volunteer yeah, going on my first primary school presentation mm. with a certain member of staff who never done one before and was more frightened than I was. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I mean everybody. Is that because I dropped you in it? Yes. I'm sure it'll be my fault somehow. <laughs> that will be karma. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm pleased that was your highlight because it was a marvellous talk. The, the creme de la creme of Gina school talks by someone who was terrified of children. So, <laughs> any other highlights? Hello. Thank you, Giles. And I'm sure that it won't be too long before you're off doing it without the guys, you know, helping you. And I'm sure you'll remember watching their talks and that will be something that you'll take to the next people who we speak to. Anybody else want to give us a highlight of the year? Lisa? Mama Bendy and I saw these mum build a grotto at Christmas. Oh. Did everyone see pictures of the Christmas grotto that was on our socials and things. It was, it was uh, the best grotto ever. I thought it was the best grotto until Andy B sat on my knee. And then <laughs> that was a little, it was traumatizing from there on in. <laughs> uh, but it was just actually behind where you're sat, Lisa, wasn't it? It was in that little room. So um, absolute tremendous effort from the two of you. And Everybody else at the rock and I don't think I've ever seen as many people in that room when we were trying to pack it all away. So yeah. Um, fantastic. Andy? Air ambulance ball. Air ambulance ball. People like Andy give up his time to help at the ball and people like me sit there and get drunk. So pick either side. <laughs> You're welcome on my table anytime. <laughs> um, especially when Paul comes with me because he pays, right? So result. Um, any other highlights? Any, anything else been going on? Who's a new volunteer in the last 12 months in the room? There's quite a few of you, isn't there? Welcome. And hopefully this time next year, you know, there'll be even more memories made with, with friends. So, fantastic. Oh, there we go, Giles. I knew I'd heard that story before. This is a mugshot of Ben. And this is obviously, Giles has already told the room that, but uh, if anybody... I've worked with the Dave before I started running. The Ampley Fantastic. I just put your name into Google and that popped up. I'm not gonna lie, sorry. <laughs> Um, but if anybody doesn't do talks or has no want to do talks, but you would like to come and see a member of the team do a talk, I would strongly recommend it. It gives you loads of information, keeps the sort of word that we're spreading fresh. So you're more than welcome to come along and even just sit in the back of the crowd or help with uh, the bucket or, you know, anything that's going on. But I, I would urge you all to, to come along as maybe once a year or something and, and, and watch the team or your fellow volunteer. Look, it can't be worse. Sheila's basically her Lambert, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and then there was Ron Pom Susan, very new to all this, but a bit overwhelmed at the number of people who attended the Put To Me About. I also found Max out in the lake, but found it quite humbling at the amount of money that was going into buckets. There were some very kind people out there. Um, this is a very soggy team of people. Um, it was torrential. This is me with my, <laughs> with, my, with my farmer waterproof trousers on and little Ava and Tasha and um, Janet. We got packed and we were soaked wet through and I think that that's just testament, you know, we talk about the commitment and things and that day we were sopping wet. I'm putting that picture on for everybody's career just as well, hands so well done. <laughs> Fantastic. So... Uh, unfortunately, Josie was planning on being here, but she's um, not been able to make it. So we are passing over to Sophie now. Uh, we're going to just make this quite an informal, like any questions, fire them over. But Sophie's going to go over volunteer role. Yeah, fab. So I'll just take you through a little bit of where we've come to to be at this point today where we've got a new volunteer system in place. So. When Hannah and I started in our roles that we're in now, just over 18 months ago, we had about 45 volunteers, what we would call registered volunteers, which is all of yourselves. So you've got uniform, you've got ID badges, and you do things on a regular basis for us. Obviously, we're happy for cash uh, handling and things like that. So we regular volunteers, about 45 of you. So me and Hannah sat down and we thought, right, what are our aims for the year? We can't bring in an extra million pounds straight away, but how are we going to get to that point? So we knew that we needed to grow our volunteer pool. So as of today, roughly, um, on our volunteer spreadsheet that we have got, there is now 110 volunteers. So we've made, obviously, a massive leap um, in the amount of volunteers that we've got out and about in the community doing things for us on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, um, which is... Yes, of course, no problem at all. Um, so obviously that's amazing because it now means that we can be more places. We cover 8,000 square miles and there's eight people in the, in the fundraising team that are out and about. So obviously that's a lot of mileage each if they were just doing it by themselves, but thankfully they're not. You're all helping them out and about there. So we're now with the extra volunteers that we've got able to get to more places, speak to more people, raise more money and raise more awareness. So to do that, we need to make sure that we're communicating with everybody well, which is something that we're striving to improve all the time. So if everybody's got, if anybody ever got any um, things that they want to get in touch about, to let us know something that isn't quite working for them, then we're always, always listening, we're always ears. And um, we're always looking for our nice IT time, I, I can't speak, IT team, um, to help us with that as well. I often go to Sam and say, I have a problem. Or whenever I walk over there, I've definitely got a problem. Um, so to get to where we are today, we knew that we needed to change the way that we do things. Having things on spreadsheets and just sending emails, some of them were a bit long-winded, so when you were opening your spreadsheet with your Excel document on it, you were having to then open another email to tell us what you wanted to do, and we just weren't seeing a massive response from that. Um, so we've been looking into different ways um, to get communications to yourselves and get them back in the easiest and simplest way possible. Hence, Volunteero came about. So Volunteero, um, it's a relatively new volunteer management system that's been kind of, about three years it's been um, going. It came about mainly at the start of the pandemic when people were doing things, um, helping neighbours and picking prescriptions up for people and picking shopping up for people. Um, but we use obviously in a slightly different way um, so this volunteer management system, which is a lovely fancy app on everybody's phones and hopefully that everybody's been able to download that and if you haven't, we're here to help, so don't worry. Um, so it's, it's a way to communicate between us and you in hopefully the best way possible um, and seamless way possible. It just, if, you, if there's something in mission there that you want to do, you just have to literally click onto it to, to apply for it rather than opening a new email and finding the pledge number and, and say that you're interested in it. Um, so we're hoping that it's going to really, we've already seen a massive difference in the amount of volunteers that we've had attending events and picking up check presentations and picking up talks um, because it's really easy to read what's in your area. Um, previously you were obviously all getting everything that was in the whole of the region which 
to somebody up in Berwick, knowing what's going on in Varro and Finesse is really irrelevant, um, unless you want to travel that far. So just finding out what's going on within kind of the radius that, that is in your area is hopefully going to make a big difference to people as well. So it's kind of a bit of a why we're here and hopefully where it's going to be. So in the next few weeks and months, um, Emily and Cheryl, our fundraising assistants, are going to be starting to open up chats with everybody on that app. So it's got a chat function, which is if people use things like WhatsApp or Messenger, it's very, very similar to that. So within the app, it's just a separate tab at the bottom, which is the chat function. So hopefully people will be able to use that in the future. So the only annoying part is that we have to set every single chat up with all the volunteers. So you wouldn't be able to just message us first. We need to go through all of the 110 volunteers that we have and start that initial conversation. But once that's open, you can, if you've got a message for somebody, rather than necessarily going on an email or giving us a call, you can just drop us a message on volunteer or, and that'll be, that'll be monitored every single day. So it'll just be like messages and on Facebook or, or something like that. It's just a different way to get in touch but there's always going to be a nice friendly face behind that communication system. It's not the volunteer or app replying by itself, it's always going to be Emily Cheryl or, if we're desperate, me or Hannah, <laughs> um, replying to those on there. So hopefully, if you've got any problems, it's just one place so that, so that you don't have to think, right, I'm going to go to WhatsApp for that, I'm going to go to email for that, I'm going to go to the app for that. We're hopefully going to have everything in one place on that app so that you can see what you've done, see what's coming up, and chat with us about anything that you need to as well. Obviously that doesn't mean that you can't pick up the phone and ring somebody if you need to, one of your local volunteers, um, one of your local team, some of your fundraisers. If you want to chat with us, I'm not saying don't pick up the phone, you only have to go and volunteer, or, but hopefully that's going to be a nice, easy way to get in touch with us and get a fairly instant message back. Um, we are at some point, once we've established all of those um, chats and they're all up and running, we're also <coughs> going to have a whole um, volunteer chat. So if we've got any big announcements or anything like that, we can put that in that chat as well. Um, but don't worry, it's not going to be loads of people then responding. We can do it where if we've got an announcement, we just put that out there but so that people can't reply to it, so that people aren't getting... 50 million notifications while you're at swimming or at the gym or something. So we can put announcements out there to everybody, for everybody to see, but people, if they've got questions, just reply to us on an individual basis rather than to everybody at once. We're then also going to work out, we might have Bucket Collections Cumbria, Bucket Collections Newcastle, some smaller group chats for people to chat between yourselves if you go into an event together um, or if you go into um, anything together. So a stall, um, a chair presentation, another talk. So we'll start to get those kind of on an ad hoc basis as we see them necessary. So at some point in the future, we will be getting rid of the WhatsApp chats that we have got, um, just because obviously we know that people say yes to being in that WhatsApp chat, but we are sharing obviously personal details with a lot of people, um, which we want to stop doing. Um, obviously everybody's phone numbers and things like that. So on volunteer role, you can chat to people, but they don't get any of your personal details, unless obviously you want to give your phone number to, to people for on the day. So we're hoping that it's going to make a massive difference. We're already seeing the impact. Um, something that's on volunteer role is um, reports. So we're still learning as you're learning, so please bear with us, but reports are really important. So once you've done a check presentation, it'll ask you to do the report. So if you just if, if there's nothing to feedback, that's fine. But if you can always put the amount of volunteer hours that you've spent traveling to the event, being at the event, and then traveling home, we can get a really, really nice picture so that of what people are doing in terms of hours for us. So this time next year, we'll be able to have some amazing stats on that board because volunteer tracks everything that everybody's doing. So this time next year, we're gonna be able to stand here and tell you exactly what you've done in terms of hours, um, in terms of missions uh, on that board so that everybody can be like, I was a part of doing exactly that. Obviously we have overall pictures, but it's really nice to see on a, on a narrowed down basis what everybody's doing as well. And Volunteer also tracks what your hours are individually. So you'll be able to go on there and see, I've gave so far 45 hours to the Great Northern Ambulance Service either this year or, or since we started with this app. 
So has anybody got any questions about the app? Um, if people aren't fully functioning with it yet, do get in touch, uh, do come over to us and ask. Yeah? Does the VPN affect the location of the app? Sounds like a question for Sam. <laughs> 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 I don't really know what that means, so if I can answer this, <laughs> that's it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. When you do the report, it asks you about how long you spent on calls. Is that initially on phone calls that you're making? <coughs> how, many, how long you spent on calls before you last the event? How long you had for the event? And how was the timing? Okay. So I just, I like to put my things in, so I like to put how long I was there. Yeah. And then I put the client just as the venue, and then just say, I had a very nice so time. <laughs> okay, yeah, so we probably need to look at that and see if we can custom that in any way. Yeah. So like I said, this is not necessarily set up as that for exactly how we're using it. So it was set up so, for example, if you were going to see your neighbour on a regular basis. Um, so if it says calls, that's just because... Um, some of, some of the activity that people were doing was bringing people to check in on them to just have that kind of well-being chat. So I'm going to speak to Joe so you check if we can custom those reports in any way so that they're more relevant to us. But if it's got on there about time, about calls, just either leave it blank or just put not applicable. Because obviously our fundraising team do all of the kind of in the middle man kind of chatting to you and chatting to the venue or the supporter and who it may be so that you can just turn up on the day and know that everything's going to be ready or, or available. Yes? Yeah. So my question is, can I sneak in through all of the potential candidates? Is there a way to filter and move on that into the list rather than going to all of them at the end? That's a very good question. I don't... I'm going to say I don't think so. I'll write that down so that I'll chat with Josie about that one. What, what, one thing I will say about volunteer is because they're fairly new, they're very good at listening to what the charities that they work with have to say, and they're continuously developing things as well. So just because it isn't there right now doesn't mean it's never going to be. Um, they've got like a, a dashboard that we can go on to to put on there what we want developing, and then we can see what's also in development as well. So they've got a lot of things that they're working on in the background. Um, so I'll, I'll, we'll chat with Josie about the, the filtering system. Yeah. Is there is a system on oh. and a quick answer is yes. Oh, apparently yes. <laughs> so you, can, you can filter from start date, last contact, newest on ears. Okay, so you can filter. You, John says you can. there is a filter on there and you can filter the newest. We can have a look at it. Darren looking look like he looks like he wants to show you how it's done in a bit. <laughs> Fab. The Thank other you. point to make as well, that at the minute the um, customer is like Gina's fundraising team, but it might be in time we change that so that becomes the venue to make it more user friendly for everyone reading it. And I think that that will probably, once we're all into the swing of things, we'll introduce that, won't we? Yeah. Anybody else get any other questions on that? And at some point in the future we will be introducing the collection box stuff onto there as well. Obviously that's not currently on there. <coughs> But we're just currently working in the background to find the best way to put that onto there because it's not set up for that but we do want that on there so that we can obviously the, the collection box routes that people do are a big um time consideration for us and we know that a lot of hours are spent on that so we will be looking to how we implement that into volunteer row so i'll probably be again looking for a stand for that one <laughs> for some help <laughs> yeah
think so that like what like to have like a bit of a profile about me. Yeah, so you can sort of see how you do because there's so much things that I don't know how I've done in terms of how you're at things and I've got so much time to do that. I'm not doing a lot of there, but I'm not actually that active. I'm not doing that physical activity. Okay, I think this is probably something we can chat about um separately to see. <laughs> That's okay, don't we? We can take this out of the room and we can chat about it and see if there's any way that we can. Because something that they're going to bring on to volunteer as well is a lot of training modules. So we can have um, videos on there for volunteer training, for refreshers, and things like that. So there's definitely more coming. Um, and if people have got any any suggestions of, of ways that they think that it's working well or what's not working so well for them, then we're absolutely happy to take all that feedback on board as well and i think as well like for me and sophie like we're keen to get people involved more with whatever they would like so if we start doing different sessions for volunteers and different things maybe some of the research you've been doing could become a session and other volunteers could attend and like create our community that way perhaps there's options to do that that we can have a think about can't we so absolutely fantastic any more questions? Or obviously, if you do have any that you don't want to put your hand up for, just come and speak to either me or Hannah or any of the team, and we'll, we'll do our best to answer them. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that's the bit we all enjoy the most, certainly, um, and this is the absolute benefit to come in to this site. Um, we, it's lovely to have everyone here, but we are so aware that it's such a long way for some people now. I think that for those um, a bit further away, we may swap it up.